today's video, we're going to talk about the parallel node. Now, I didn't use parallel nodes in my node tree for a very long time, but now I use them every time. Let's get into it. Before I show you how to use the parallel node in your node tree, I'm just going to add two serial nodes here and do a quick normalization and balance of this image. Nice and quickly, I'm just going to increase my contrast. That's looking great. I'll label this node luminance. I'll add another serial node using LTS. I'll label this one color. And just using my primary color wheels, I'll just go ahead and shift the gain slightly towards cyan, just to cool off those highlights. And the gamma, I might just go down to our red channel and just increase that by a few points and decrease the red in the shadows. Pressing Control D to bypass that color node. That's before and that's after. Okay, so where do parallel nodes come in? So I've got a client with me and they're quite keen for me to do some beauty work on this interviewee's face. They want to get quite specific, so I want to take a qualification off his face and add a power window so I can really target his skin tones. I'm going to hit Alt S on the keyboard and label this face. I'm going to go to the qualify palette and go ahead and just start to make a selection here. I'll hit Shift H to enter highlight mode. And let's start to finesse this a little bit more. Adjusting the width down and adjusting the center, let's really find the sweet spot. We'll increase our low filter for our saturation. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna to go to my matte finesse and just clean up the black and clean up the white and add a bit of a blur. Now this isn't perfect, but this will do really nicely for this example. Just to finish, I'm gonna go over to my windows palette and add myself a circle shape and just roughly position this into place. Hitting shift H to exit highlight mode. I'm gonna go ahead to my offset wheel and just add a very obvious and very attractive looking adjustment on this man's face. So I'm gonna make him nice and green. So for some reason, this is exactly what the client wanted. So job done. But now you've actually realized you wanna start tweaking some of the nodes before this third serial node. For example, say you wanna tweak the color temperature, which ideally you'd do in your color balancing node. So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna to go to my temperature slider. And you can see very quickly that the mask starts to break. If I slide it the other way, you can see a very similar thing happens. The mask starts to lose its point of reference. This can happen with any adjustment. So if I start to swing the gamma, you can see that this is breaking really quickly. Any changes that we make down the pipeline will affect this mask. And it means that if we make a change here, we're more than likely gonna have to re-pull our key. We'll start finessing these values. This is where a parallel node can be really helpful. I'm gonna go ahead and delete my face mask and create a parallel node using Alt P. What this does is it creates our parallel mixer as well as another corrector node. And I'm just gonna click on this blue line to break this connection and connect the input to the input of this node. So if I just hit Alt D on the keyboard to bypass all of my nodes and we have a look at the source view here, this is what's happening at the start of our node tree. This image is now being piped up to these two nodes to undergo some contrast and color adjustments and then get mixed together with whatever's on this node and we'll output the final result, which is connected to the end of our node tree. Hitting Alt D. Now that we have a parallel node structure, I can go ahead and add my qualifier down below. Now I'm gonna to go to my offset wheel and I'm gonna boost a horrendous amount of green into this image. And there we have it, a very similar result to what we had without the parallel mixer. What's really special about this though, is because our face qualification is now coming from our original input rather than the input of this node, I can go ahead and make changes to the top half of this parallel node structure and it will not affect my face mask. So if I go ahead and click color and start to make some pretty wacky adjustments here with the offset, so I'm gonna push everything towards purple, swing it around to blue. And you can see that as I make these changes, our face mask is not breaking at all. I mean, it doesn't look good, but that wasn't the point of this tutorial. Going here and resetting my offset adjustment, that means that if I wanted to now make subtle adjustments like you know, changing the color temperature or maybe pushing the gain towards a different direction, that's not affecting my mask, which is really fantastic because it means you don't have to worry about the mask breaking. It can also save you a bit of embarrassment because sometimes if you make some adjustments and it breaks the key in a subtle way, you might not notice and your client might. This is a really redundant way to make sure that you're not gonna break your key without realizing it. In my day-to-day -day grading at the moment, I have a similar looking structure to this at the beginning of each node tree, which allows me to perform my basic normalization and balance, as well as pulling any secondaries that I need. Because this node just isolates the subject's face, I could go ahead and create another serial node 
and qualify, for example, the cushion. Now with this pillow node, I can also go ahead and make crazy changes. And I can again come back to my color, start making other adjustments. And that secondary qualification is also completely fine. For some reason, I really didn't get the value of this concept for a long while. And it took me a while to incorporate parallel nodes like this into my daily grading node tree. So I hope this has helped and maybe convinced you to start using this node tree in your workflow. Give it a go and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Cheers.